Hey, how's everybody doing? Okay, we got volume. Okay, I got. I'm gonna be completely honest here. I I have no idea what's going on, but I have rarely, if ever, had problems with Twitch on the Xbox, streaming with it, watching it, and this was with an older, shittier modem, worse internet, and it this it's crashed twice today, and it could be Mojang. I want to be completely honest. It could be Mojang because. It, it was streaming earlier this morning, and it was streaming okay, and Mojang just did an update. Um, they literally just did an update. I was playing Minecraft, and I was logging off because I wanted to rest up for this stream, and, and then it crashed. I just reinstalled fucking Twitter, and but I do want to say this. Uh, the first call this, uh, if it turns out that they have people in the government connected to the government that are fucking around over UFOs. You should write your congressman and tell them flat out, if it turns out there is a disinformation campaign, if they have been harassing anybody in and out of the government to cover it up in any way, they should not be afraid to issue those people a fucking death penalty. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and you know, and I, I would feel the same way if GM or UAW is fucking around with my stream. Uh, cause I have no idea. Cause like I said, I generally don't have any problems at all with it. And then it's like today I'm talking about the government cover up of UFOs and you know, what's going on with GM and you and with my health. And all of a sudden, you know, this one starts fucking up and it wasn't doing it earlier. Now maybe it's Mojang. I don't know. But I'm not kidding you. This shit pisses me right off. Because I've never had any fucking problem with it. It could be Mojang, though. I uh, Let's be honest. Uh, but I just reinstalled Twitter. I recycled my fucking modem. Shouldn't be any of this stuff. But, you know, maybe. Uh... But when they finally get to the bottom with these people in government that have been like, uh, and according to Grutch and others, have been harassing people, the death penalty would be fine for me if they want to fucking put those people out of our fucking misery. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to start over yet again. If this doesn't work, I'm probably not going to do it. Uh, but I'll try tomorrow. But, uh, no, the uh, call to action, uh, it sounds like it's already made it through the Senate. Uh, a week ago, that was not the case. A week ago, Ross Coltart was talking about the UFO disclosure bill being blocked by three senators, Mitch McConnell and two other of Mitch, the bitch McConnell's associates in the Senate. And uh, this shit's going to give me fucking lightheaded, getting angry like this. But, um, well, anyways, uh, so there's that. Uh, it sounds like it's going to go through the house, and this is something Grutch was talking about. And if you have not seen it, if you have any interest in any of this stuff, go and watch Joe Rogan's podcast with uh, David Grutch. He's the UFO UAP whistleblower. I, I cannot go into everything, but it was, very, it was one of the best interviews I have seen in my life to date. And that's actually saying something. But he was uh, talking about... Uh, he was talking about... Uh, and this kind of ties into what I'm talking about here. Uh, he was talking about Jack Vallee... I think it was him. He did a book, and he was talking about a phenomenon. Now, he didn't go into depth. It probably, it might have been, you know, like me, it might have been more than he could understand. Definitely was more than he could cover in a quick interview. Um, you know, it's kind of like that one podcast I did uh, a little bit ago on the JFK assassination, I said, look, you know, there was a 
eight-part series done on uh, the BBC about that. And I go, even if I was healthy, I could not get as much information in eight hours as they did, let alone, you know, an hour or two-hour stream. But uh, he said, Jack Vallée, if I, if I got it right, whoever it was, I think it was Jack Vallée, a French UFOologist and a scientist, I believe, uh, he, uh, he was talking about this phenomenon and he was acting like it's all the same phenomenon. And he goes, it, it has changed how it appears to us over the years. And, uh, like, as he talked about, you know, in the 1400s, it was witches sitting on people's chest and you know now it's appearing as other stuff like orbs and and other shit and here's the only thing i got to say about that is i think he is not so much wrong but i think he's making claims that he probably doesn't have evidence for because here's the thing um and this this is my I want to I want to make sure I tailor this because I don't say that I necessarily disagree with him a hundred percent I just think it's pretty presumptive for him to act like he completely understands it and is putting it all into one phenomena we could be dealing with multiple phenomena and uh, I, I really do and and maybe we're not. Maybe we're, I, I, I can't say one way or the other. And I don't think he can honestly say either that it's this one massive phenomena. Now, when you look at with UFOs, the stuff people are saying now is the same stuff they were saying during World War II. And when you when you read stuff like with Christopher Columbus and others, they are describing things where if you take in the, the gap between then and now, uh, they're, they're talking about the same kind of shit. And, you know, so this thing, the, the, the UFO stuff has been here, but when you're talking about the paranormal, for, for, for anyone to say, oh, well, it's all one phenomena and it looks different, well, maybe not. We, we could be dealing with multiple phenomena. Maybe we're not. Maybe we are dealing with one phenomena. But to me, if you're going to make claims like that, you better have the evidence to back it up. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure he can say that he does have the evidence to back that up. Uh, okay, now the, uh, the calls to action that I'm asking for is uh, with... With the Senate, it sounds like they... Ah, oh, fucking A. With the Senate, it sounds like they have passed the uh, UFO disclosure bill. So we need to reach out to the House members. And uh, it sounds like you, you had Mitch McConnell, that was him and two others were holding it up. At least that was reported by Ross Coulter. Maybe he got the Senate. He's not from America, so maybe he got the Senate and the House confused. But he called Mitch McConnell by name, and he is in the Senate. But it sounds like it's passed the Senate. And uh, and he was saying that a while ago. That it sounded like they had clear bipartisan support in the Senate. They weren't sure if they had it in the House. But uh, the last I've heard, it sounds like the House is what the hang-up is. And in that reporting, and I think this was David Grutch, they reported that it was uh, a, uh, a representative from Ohio... And there was a representative from another district. And uh, the guy in Ohio, it's the district that has uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base in it. And uh, hang on a sec.
which might have some interest in keeping this quiet, might have some, and, and David Grush is the one that was also, like, when asked about people being harmed or killed to cover this up, he said he couldn't really talk about that. Uh, and there was something, you know, and he, he did this a little bit with uh, Rogan. He's like, he goes, I'm going to talk about this vaguely, uh, and I think I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. But he talked about two different instances where him and his wife were messed with uh, after he started investigating UFOs and for the government. You know, that, that's the weird thing. You know, he's not like me out running. He's working for the government. And the, the he talked about the thing he ran into there where there was some guy, it was either a one- or a two-star general, I think, who and he was basically there on a mandate from Congress. Congress had passed a law. It was required for them to be, you know, them to be forthcoming with him in his investigation. And uh, this general was asking, well, why the hell should I tell anything? What right do you have to read this? And he said, well, he goes, I can ask you, he goes, you've read this stuff, right? That stuff I'm asking where you're aware of it, you've read it? He goes, yeah. He goes, well, what right did you have? And it just it fucking knocked the general on his on his backside. You know, you just, it, it, he knocked him back. He was no longer on a front foot, you might say. And uh, and he said, "What right did you have?" He goes, "You were given it." He goes, "My right is coming from Congress." He goes, "They passed a law." He goes, "You are basically I I can't remember if he implied it or he said it, but he was kind of indicating that." You know, he had a legal right to do this, and you were violating a law of Congress by not following it. But it really, I guess, rocked that general back. Because, see, he wasn't used to that shit. Um, I, I've known people in the military, and, you know, and, and they they kind of get brainwashed. Like, when you, and I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, I'm really not, but, you know, a fact is a fact, you know, Um you know, a fact is a fact. Like, uh, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, the uh, um, but there was somebody I knew that was in the military, and they were they were talking about it. They go, yeah, you know, that I I really like that feeling I got when I could just tell somebody when they asked me why they had to do something because I'm the gunny, and that that's a when when you get in the military, like uh, I don't I don't I'm not as familiar what they do with the officer corps because I didn't really know that many people that were officers in the military. But there's a little bit. I mean, it's still going around. It's just probably different. But with uh, with people that are in boot camp, and whether it's the Navy, definitely with the Marines and the Army, but even with the Navy, the Air Force, uh, the Air Force is a little different, I think. But with, with all three of those branches, especially the Army and the military, it's like, it's like when you enter a cult. They are going to break you down. They're going to break you down to base components, and they're going to build you back into what you want. Now, for the most part, they are building good, productive members of our So They're not like a cult. You know, I'm, not, I'm not trying to morally compare it to, although there are bad people that come out of that. And uh, but for the most part, those people come out of the they are valid, useful, productive members of society. But in that case, it's what you have to do to get somebody when they're in combat to run towards a gunfire instead of away from it, like I would. You know, I mean, and, and I'm you know, I think I think you can basically maybe accept that they do it with the police and the firefighters. Although I don't I don't think they do it as much. But you're basically, re- in those cases, you're reprogramming someone. It's not as bad as the military, but it's the same kind of principle because you are trying to teach people to work against their basic human instincts, their fight or flight instinct, telling them, yeah, if somebody's shooting at you and you're not personally involved, you should get the fuck out. You know, like Eddie Murphy, when he was talking about horror movies, he goes, this is why you don't see any black people in horror movies because he said, if a black person went into a house, you know, and got, you know, and they got it for a deal, and they get in there, oh, honey, this is great. We got the yard out there. The kids are playing on the swing. We got this nice, beautiful house. Get out. Too bad we can't stay, baby. We got, we, we gotta go. 
He goes, I would leave the keys in the mailbox and I would just tip the fuck out the door. I'd be I'd be calling the I'd be calling the bank. It's like, yeah, um, yeah, the, the keys are there. It's all yours. Don't fucking bother us again. And and he goes, in that movie poltergeist, he goes, I'd be at the fucking police station. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, are you telling us that your daughter uh is gone? Yeah, she's in the T V set. Didn't you try to save your daughter? Yeah, I'm a man. I changed the channels. The shit didn't work. I got the fuck out. And uh, but uh, but that's the thing with that general. He's gotten so used to his word being, you know, a command that has to be followed. It was a little. And, and then if you watch, there's this movie that uh, HBO made years ago. It's called uh, Pentagon Wars. It is actually based on the uh, factual history of the Bradley uh, fighting vehicle. 